прописано в этом договоре. Одновременно будет развернута очень широкая работа к тем, чтобы все страны или весь ядерный клуб, который очень обширен сейчас, подключились к этому договору. Мы понимаем, что так не радикалов. Я уж не говорю, что в какой-нибудь момент такие действия, которые подрывают государственный суверенитет, могут закончиться вполне себе такой полноценной региональной войной. И даже, никого не хочу пугать, с применением ядерного оружия. In a speech before the 18th General Assembly of the United Nations, President John Kennedy warned even little wars are dangerous in a nuclear world. Today it has been through the hardline preventive actions taken by the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Russian military and political leadership that have held back the tides of a threatened international conflict. Simultaneous with these delays, the economic conditions in the transatlantic have deteriorated to the point of imminent breakdown, while the Eurasian region has enjoyed relative prosperity in comparison. Since the hyperinflationary measures started in 2008 and continue unabated to this day, the transatlantic economies are in ruins and no longer maintain the semblance of economic power they had 30 years ago. Similarly, NATO no longer maintains the military power it had during the Cold War. Only the United Kingdom, France, and the United States among the NATO countries maintain their own nuclear arsenal. France is believed to have a nuclear stockpile of 300 warheads. And Britain maintains a stockpile of 225 with 160 active nuclear warheads. Britain, France, and the United States after their cooperative mission to eliminate the Libyan head of state, are currently the most emphatic to end the regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria, despite the line drawn by Russia. This enthusiasm from the West has taken the form of openly arming barbaric opposition groups. They have claimed the right to enforce humanitarian intervention policies of the type championed by Iraq War architect Tony Blair. And from the United States, President Obama is escalating the propaganda campaign to establish the pretext for a full-fledged U.S.-led military intervention into Syria and beyond. That a red line for us is we start saying a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. If World War were the intention, a Middle East attack would immediately engage the world powers of Russia and China. Inevitably, the United States would employ the greatest assets of its nuclear arsenal. The trajectory of a ballistic missile launched from the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean, the normal patrol areas of the Ohio-class submarine, would most likely cross China or Russia, assuming the target to be somewhere in the Middle East or Asia in general. This has two significant implications. First, the U.S. would have to inform Russia or China of its intentions prior to initiating a strike from a submarine if either of those two nations was not the intended target, which blunts the effectiveness of the strike. Second, the launch acts as a datum for the submarine itself. If the launch platform is also carrying nuclear weapons, the effect of launching a missile makes the entire submarine and its nuclear payload more vulnerable. Assuming that other nations have been informed of an intention to launch a strike from a ballistic missile submarine, this may afford a nation an opportunity to actually destroy the submarine. 
For these two reasons, it is unlikely that any U.S. president will execute a non-nuclear strike from an Ohio-class submarine on strategic deterrent patrol. At the commencement of the August 1983 Ariche Conference on the technological basis on which to build peace, Chairman Antonino Zikiki spoke of the consequences to humanity and the planet as a whole if a personality came on the scene foolish enough to provoke a worldwide thermonuclear confrontation. He warned that in history, fools have never been lacking. Sooner or later, in 10, 20, or maybe 100 years, a fool will come forth. When the fool appears on the scene, mankind will find itself with hundreds of millions of dead. With the ozone layer destroyed by 50%, with the average temperature of the planet lowered by at least seven degrees with an enormous amount of radioactivity about, and with mountains of ashes instead of the vast treasures accumulated in centuries of laborious and intelligent activity in all parts of the world. When dealing at the level of thermonuclear war, these decisions ultimately fall to the personalities of the heads of state involved When the American people chose Dwight D. Eisenhower to lead the nation, it was his handling of the Suez Crisis which drew us back from what would have inevitably escalated into nuclear war. When the American people selected John F. Kennedy to be Commander-in-Chief, it was his commitment to survival and progress and peace that guided his hand in dealing with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev in Cuba, in Berlin, and in securing a nuclear test ban treaty. Today, the American people have chosen Barack Obama, who at the earliest phase of his presidency was already moving the apparatus into place that could and would trigger a worldwide nuclear holocaust. Obama, on his part, is clinically insane. His state of mind, as manifest, is that of a clinically insane person. And it's a clinical insanity of the Nero type. So therefore, he is in, in a mood and on a road toward his own self-annihilation, whether as a personality or even more drastic measures. That is coming. This man is a type who is capable of suicide. This may be the first clear suicide case in the U.S. presidency. He's in the direction of getting there. Whether he actually gets there, the fact remains, he's now developing rapidly in that direction. The American people will soon go to the polls to decide the next president of the United States. Recent estimates and reports indicate that the United States military, in particular the U.S. naval capability, will be at its peak deployment capacity in the coming months before elements are retired, phased out, or cut from the budget.
If ever there were a time to launch an attack, it would be now, in these coming months. If ever there were a time to prevent such an attack, it would be now, before the consequences of the November 6th election. <laughs>